Hey, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I would do a video about potatoes. The year wouldn't be right without me doing a potato video and for people that have watched every video I've ever done, I don't think I'm going to be telling them anything new, but this is for people that have joined in and, and not, uh, not had a free rainy day where they can go back and watch everything I've ever done. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to plant them, how to grow them, and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, you couldn't pick an easier thing to grow than potatoes, and uh, I, I couldn't recommend a better thing to grow in my garden. I think if I was down to uh, three beds, I'd probably grow potatoes, kale, and beans. Uh, I love potatoes, love beans, and I love kale. Um, but there's an easy way to do it and a hard way to do it. and. If you read about growing potatoes, they'll talk about hilling them up, right? So, you you know, you, 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 you dig the ground, you dig a furrow in the ground, you put the potato in the furrow, and then you move soil, you mound soil up around the potato, and then after, I don't know, a month, you mound more soil up, and you mound more soil up. And uh, that's the argument. You totally don't need to do that if you're using a mulch, a heavy mulch. Uh, the reason you have to mound soil up is if, if you consider this where my hands are, the soil level, right? And you got the potato underneath the soil and it starts popping out different potatoes and they start growing and they'll, 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 if there's just soil over the potatoes, it'll move aside as they try to push their way up, right? They'll, they'll, you know, potato grows and gets bigger and bigger and, and they'll swell up with, uh, you know, just their water and their mass and their size. And if there's just soil over them, the rain will push it away and the potato will push up a little bit. Some of them, right, the ones that are near the surface will push up and that soil will wash away from the wind or the rain and the potato will become exposed and it'll turn green and it won't taste good. It'll be uh, harder in your stomach and it's not any good. That's why you should never have bare earth. If you, uh, if you have something like this over a potato, right, as a potato uh, as the potato swells up and grows, something like this just goes up. It'll just push up. It won't, it's not gonna. It's not gonna move aside like soil because it's, it's not loose like that. It's it's all knitted together and woven together just from just sheer random forces. So as the potato goes up, this stuff goes up, and it just stays over it, keeps the sun off of it. So you got enough of it on. Keeps the soil moist, so you don't have to water it and just does all your work for it. Not only that, but the worms are there. They, where this stuff meets the soil layer, layer, the worms are there eating the decomposing hay and turning your hay into worm castings, which fertilizes your garden, which fertilizes everything. So while your potatoes are growing, you're composting, and the compost, uh, that process is keeping the soil moist, and it's all working together. Everything is working for you and you're sitting back having a martini or something, enjoying your life, and all you gotta do is come out after about 50 or 60 days have gone by and pull the potatoes out of the ground and make a potato salad or some roasted potatoes or some mashed potatoes or some french fries or whatever it is you like. So uh, today I'm gonna, I've already planted lots of potatoes in my garden, so I'm gonna walk you around and show you how they're doing. They're all growing on a mulch because that's the technique I use. I'm also going to plant some of these uh, Kennebecs. These are a great variety of potato. Uh, Kennebec is a, uh, a very starchy white potato. They have a good flavor. They're good for french fries and mashed potato type thing. Uh, they're a good all-around potato. I mean, I would say my two favorite potatoes are uh, Red New Orleans because they're very good for roasting and good for potato salad. They're not very good for a mashed potato. And these Kennebecs because they're really good for mashed potatoes and uh, french fries and things like that. And they've got a, they're incredibly dense got a great flavor. They keep forever. They're, I find them uh, relatively pest resistant. I've tried various varieties in my garden where I've got a lot of different uh, kinds of things that get at potatoes in the soil and I find the ones like Superior and Aramosa which have a very soft tender, I mean they're nice potatoes because they've got this beautiful soft skin but that soft skin makes them vulnerable to a lot of pests and I don't find they hold up well here. Uh, if they hold up well where you are, grow them. They're a wonderful potato. I, I love the Superior and I love the Hermosa, but it, I find things like uh, Kennebec are, are better. I mean, it's, it's got a more of a, a tough skin like a, a russet, but better flavor, much better flavor than a russet in my opinion. Anyway, enough about potato varieties. Maybe that's another video, whole another conversation. 
So here I'm going to take you around and just show you the ones that are growing and uh, talk about some more benefits of having the mulch, uh, other things that can happen that a mulch can, uh, can save you from. And then I'm going to stick a few in the ground. Right, so here's a garden where I've got some potatoes starting to poke up through the mulch. Now, I planted these, oh, a month ago. And we've had some brutal cold nights and frosts and nights where it's been minus three and minus four in between when I planted them. And luckily for me, these had not poked through the mulch at that time, so they were relatively protected from that frost. And that frost killed a lot of things in my garden. If you've been following my videos recently, this is uh, first week of June 2018. Uh, I lost a lot of things. Even frost-tolerant hardy plants got devastated. But anyway, these potatoes, because they were under that, were fine. And, you know, if you're new to this technique, you can get nervous that they're not going to find their way up to the mulch. Because, I mean, I put a good heavy mulch. Let, let me just see if I can demonstrate that for you. How heavy is this mulch? Oh, <laughs> there's a potato right there. <laughs> anyway, from the top of the mulch to the actual soil level is about, right now it's about uh, five or six inches. Um, but it's because this, this mulch, and this is just uh, grass that someone raked off their lawn and, and put in a brown paper bag and left on the side of the road. It was probably a foot high when I laid it down. And then the rain and stuff has, you know, has, has compressed it and made it uh, more like six inches. So it's fairly thick and fairly compressed. But the uh, potatoes have found their way through it. And you'll see these different mounds. I can see one right there. I'm going to center the camera on it. Right here there's a mound. Right here there's a mound. And I guarantee you that there's a potato right there. Right underneath here is one. There it is. But you, you gotta resist the urge to do that. Just leave them alone, let them find their way let them find their way through when they want to come through, right? Potatoes were developed, all the different varieties we had were developed from a wild variety. And all of them were able to find their way through, and these ones will find their way through as well. Alright, so that's uh, that's one area where I've got potatoes. These are the first ones I planted, and they're just coming through now. I put a really heavy mulch on these because I was worried about it, us getting frosts, and that was that was a well-justified concern, because we did. Here's another place where I planted some potatoes. Um, I, did, I did a video on uh, how to avoid, uh, how to deal with weeds. So you can see over here, potatoes have poked their way through. And over here, where I planted recently, they have not yet. But this whole grassy area is all potatoes, and, and they'll, they'll be up in a couple weeks. Okay, so I gotta work quick here because I'm running out of battery, as always. Uh, I got a little patch. This whole thing has been planted. I got peas down the middle, and I got potatoes on the sides. And uh, I got a bit of lamb's quarters here. You can eat those. I've been eating them like crazy the last few weeks. You know, weeding, not a very complicated affair. You, especially when you're growing potatoes, take the weeds, pull them out, throw them on top of the mulch. Okay, so that's weeded. I haven't done anything on this patch of earth since last November. Now it's weeded. <laughs> and now we're gonna plant the potatoes. And I remember writing, when I used to write a column, I said that I could probably maintain my entire garden if I had the time with a stick and a bucket. So I'm gonna plant these potatoes using a stick instead of my usual trusty homey gardening tool. Just to show you how soft and loose and easy to work this soil is, even though I haven't touched it since November and it has not been tilled it's never been tilled. So anyway, it's so all seaweed here. I put a good six inches of seaweed on it last fall. And yeah, there was a bit of uh, lamb's quarters weeds in there, a little bit of timothy there. But not a big deal, especially when you're growing potatoes. So, no further ado. And I got a bit of uh, garlic. This, uh, I don't know what happened here. I don't remember planting garlic. I must have just left some in the ground. So I'm just inclined to let them do the thing. But anyway, let's space these out. One here. One here, I like to put them about a foot apart. Potato, potato. How fast can we do this? Potato. 
And uh, nothing wrong with planting potatoes in June. I planted them a lot earlier and I planted them a lot later. And I don't bother cutting them and chitting them and all that foolishness. It's chitting, C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G, not what you think you heard. Chitting. Um, okay, so I got about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, about a dozen potatoes here, give or take. There's a little one, I'll throw that guy in too. Where are these ones? There's one right there, I can see one growing right there. Okay, so that's the line. Okay, now we'll use our stick. I want to go down about uh, six to eight inches into the ground. That's how, how deep I want them underneath. Right, so I can I can do that. The soil's soft enough. I can do that easily enough with the stick. Loosen it up a bit with the stick. Use your hand. The end with the most eyes. You, you have that end pointing up. Stick that in. The soil is beautiful and loose and dark. Here, I'm going to bring some in. We got enough battery to capture all this. It's beautiful dark soil. Right, never been tilled, never been fertilized. Just keep adding mulch every year. There's one. There's two. I'm going to do all the ones that are easy to reach first and then the ones at the far end last. All this, the, the indigenous, the natural, the original soil here was all hard clay. And it's just gotten looser and more, more soft uh, every year. There's nothing quicker and easier than planting potatoes. And when you use this technique, there's no uh, hilling or weeding or watering or anything. I mean, when I'm done, what I'm doing here on this video, I am done until it's time to harvest. That's all I'm going to do. Get this guy out. There we go. This bed is not the ideal dimensions for a bed, but I was just using the space to its maximum capacity. I don't, I don't recommend having beds that are about this bed's about six feet by six feet. It's a it's a very awkward dimension. It makes makes good use of the space, but it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to work. I definitely admit that. It's, it's at the end of my reach. I think you know a guy my size can reach about two feet comfortably. And here I am reaching over three three feet, and it's, it's not comfortable. a little battery left. All right, put this guy in. I'm do this as fast as I can. You know, generally speaking, I like to be relaxed in my garden. I like to take it easy, have fun in my garden, as I always recommend, but <laughs> I tend to do things really fast anyway. Uh, uh, the fun part of the gardening is, is harvesting the food and cooking it for me, not, not this part, right? This is just like putting down an investment. Okay, great tool, totally effective, cost nothing. Now we got the mulch that I paid nothing for. All right, it's just stuff. I think this is a, a bit of leaves and spoiled hay from a horse stable. Just lay that down about. Might even have too much here. This will suppress weeds, maintain moisture levels, and feed the soil. All at the same time. And it costs nothing. That is so much better than buying bags of 61212, renting rototillers, burning gasoline, spending all that time and energy. I don't have to do anything now, but wait for these to grow and when they're done growing pick them. It's done. I did this all in real time. That's all it takes. Okay, so that's it. I'm done. Potatoes are planted. Didn't take long at all. And there's nothing left to do now. Just 
just watch them grow and pick them when they're ready. So I got a good oh five six inches of mulch here. I would say six inches is a minimum. And uh, for potatoes, I like a mulch that's got lots of space and air and it's relatively loose. I like leaves. I like seaweed. I like um, straw and hay and things like that. Uh, grass clippings can work, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go too thick because they can get kind of dense. And the best thing is to mix a lot of things in together. So actually, the smell here is pretty pretty spectacular. Uh, this particular mulch here is actually a mix of seaweed leaves and uh, spoiled hay full of horse pee and stuff like that. So it's it's a pretty amazing smell, but this will really feed the soil and the worms will be happy. And yes, slugs and things tend to like this sort of stuff, but I don't find they bother potatoes too much. So it's not a big deal if you're growing potatoes. And I almost view doing this in a garden in, in any given year, a space like this, is almost like rebuilding the soil, right? The, all of this mulch will feed the soil. The worms and all those things are going to go crazy breaking that down and distributing the nutrients throughout the soil. And even the potatoes that grow, and you think about the root systems that potatoes have uh, put out, and when you pick the potatoes, you just take the potatoes so the roots stay on the ground. And all the, or that, all that organic material, if you're not tilling it up, you know, imagine of those roots going down on the ground and creating like, um, almost like tunnels into the ground. And then when they just die over the winter, those, those roots become tunnels, right? Because they break down and they get eaten by microorganisms. And they provide a, a way for the, the rain and, and various organisms to move up and down through the soil, right? So by putting all those roots in the ground that you leave there, you're actually, in a sense, tilling your soil without tilling it, right? By growing potatoes in the soil, you're fertilizing it, you're tilling it, you're getting it ready for something else to go there next year. And you're, you're not gonna, if you do it this way, you're not gonna be doing anything all season long except harvesting in the fall. And if you know you plant them this time of year, this is a fairly fast growing potato, reasonably uh, quick number of days to maturity. I might even be able to put some uh, spinach in here next fall, depending on what kind of fall we're having and what kind of summer we have, and, and, and a myriad of variables that are beyond my control. So anyway, I hope you found that uh, informative and helpful. Do not uh, bother with hilling up and all that sort of stuff with potatoes. It's, it's totally unnecessary. People have been asking me about that. You don't need to do it. If you do it this way under a mulch, you don't need any of that. With this system, everything just takes care of itself. All right, so I hope that uh, put that to rest and helps people uh, grow more potatoes. Uh, if you haven't been growing your own, if you've been buying them, you are missing out. The ones you buy just don't taste good. The ones you grow do taste good, especially if you've got healthy soil. So, yes, potatoes are a cheap thing to buy. But it's because the potatoes you're buying are cheap. <laughs> if you grow potatoes, you're going to get high quality potatoes that are very good for you, that cost next to nothing, that taste really great. And you can save the potatoes and plant them the next year. So it's really a, a no-brainer of a crop. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please uh, subscribe, share, like, bell, and all that good stuff. And uh, check out my podcast, MaritimeGuarding.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.